Welcome to All Night with Dean Regas. My name is Dean Regas. I'm your astronomer. And today we're going to hang around the Earth a little bit. We're going to explore some of the ancient wonders of the world and look at things like uh, the Great Pyramids of Egypt, uh, El Castillo, also known as the Temple Kukulkan and Chichen Itza, and this one, Stonehenge in England, and the Great Serpent Mound right here in my state of Ohio. What do these four things have in common other than being really old and really cool looking? All I got to do with a lot of astronomy, and this was the thing in the ancient world to do, make big structures, talk about space. <laughs> The field that we're going to be covering is called archaeoastronomy. So this is like the most ancient of the ancient structures that we have. And this seems to have been like the thing to do in the ancient world is like, let's build a mound. Let's build a temple. Let's build these other things that are really cool and have stood the test of time. But they also have astronomical significance because a big thing for the ancient world was you got to know what day it is, like what day of the year it is. And they had to build like giant calendars. So this one's an example of a calendar. Uh, this one's less so an example of a calendar. This is just basically, hey, let's just build a really giant pyramid thing and we'll throw some ast astronomical stuff in there. For example, this is the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Maybe you've seen pictures of the three really biggest ones that were to the pharaohs. Now, the astronomical part of this is that they're all built to the cardinal direction. So the four sides of the pyramid are north, south, east, and west. And for just a little bit of engineering fun, um, they put these shafts into the pyramid so that the pharaoh or whoever is buried in there could look out from the center of the pyramid through the shaft, through the window, and look at their favorite star. That is one pretty expensive star window to make, that's for sure. So this is just kind of like a little hint to, to what the madness is of archaeoastronomy, over-engineering stuff to do little stuff. Well, we would call it little stuff, but it's pretty big stuff. And there's four dates in the ancient world that, well, Everybody need to know, because if you knew like when the summer solstice was and the winter solstice was and when spring started, when fall started, and, you know, we know these dates, at least uh, I forget some of these dates sometimes because sometimes spring is March 20th, sometimes 21st. But anyway, these are the four important dates in the ancient world. And if you could figure out what day those were happening, then you know what the weather's going to be. You know, like what migration patterns are going to be. You might know when the crops are coming in, that kind of stuff. And so knowing what day it was, was super important. And that's why you got to build some big stuff to be able to tell the dates. And so we're going to go to Chichen Itza, which is in the Yucatan Peninsula in uh, Mexico. And this was a pretty interesting complex because, all right, first off, we just saw a pyramid in Egypt. Now we're seeing a pyramid on the other side of the world, almost similar in, in, in scale. Okay, it's a little smaller, but still. Uh, the way that they set this up was the four sides, again, to the directions. Uh, this is called El Castillo, also known as the Temple Kukulkan, and it has four very, very steep sides on it with stairs. And they used to let you climb up there, but they don't do it anymore because so many people would like fall down the steps and die. So you can't climb up, which is, I was kind of bummed because I wanted to climb up. Uh, but there's four sides to the pyramid and each side has, are you ready? 91 steps on it. Why 91 steps? 91 times four, what do you get? 364, then there's a step at the top getting into the temple. You got 365 steps on a temple. Each step is a day. There's your whole symbol of the year. Pretty cool, huh? I know, and they didn't like make a sign, be like, hey, look, 365 steps right here. Every day uh, had a step, and so they could mark their time with that. But wait, it gets better. Because 
at the bottom of the east and west, look how steep those steps are. I mean, they're like four inches. Yeah, you just like totally fall and die if you fall down the steps. But look at the side of, the, of these steps. You got these dragon heads or snake heads at the bottom of these. And so these are on the east and west stairwells. And they aligned this so that on the spring and fall equinoxes, the sun would come in, cast the shadows on the side of the, the pyramid and make a serpent going down the steps with the head lit up only on the equinoxes. Fruity, sweet. Yeah, I mean, that like flowing serpent thing, that's really really cool i mean that's like basically they're saying hey um we tell the sun what to do the sun doesn't tell us what to do kind of thing we can make the sun go exactly where we want uh in england they did their own kind of version instead of like making a cool little serpent going down there they built stonehenge and this is probably one of the most famous archaeoastronomy sites uh just because like it's in movies a lot it's not as big as you think it would be like if you're there you're like eh, those are some big stones but I thought it'd be bigger, uh, but what these stones do is, well, nobody knew. They're just like, well, when they put all these stones in their grass for a while, for some reason. Well, it's actually uh, the last part of an even older calendar. So back in the day, you, know, you can see this like mound that's around it. Uh, they had this mound that the sunlight would come through one of the openings at a certain time of year, and they would know that. Then you can see those little like circles around the mound. They had posts there that would stick up and the sun would come between the posts at certain times of year and they could measure that cycle over and over again. But the chieftain was like, yeah, mound, yeah, right, that's pretty good. Posts, yeah, those are pretty good. Let's build them out of rocks. And so they're like, let's get the biggest stones we can get, which were not around there, by the way. They had, the, we know where the quarry is, where they got these big stones that they stood up. It was 19 miles away. So they cut the stones 19 miles away, dragged them up the slate hill, then put them up, then put ones on the top, then went around the outside. It's like, why? What? That's so much work. What are they doing with those? This is how important telling time was, is that they would make this whole gigantic thing just to be able to figure out what time it was, what day it was, and to have some sunlight come through some of the big pillars at certain times of the year. It's a lot of work, man. I would have stuck with the posts, by the way. Posts would be way better, but I guess they all rotted, so. All right, stone's good. Well, we've been all around the world, but now we're going to bring you back at least home to my home state of Ohio, where we have two of the most interesting archaeoastronomy sites around. And one of them, the first one's at Fort Ancient, right up the I-71 from us here, and just recently uh, became known as a uh, World Heritage Site, which is really cool. So uh, the construction of this mound system, you know, so when the explorers came through, they saw this mound around the top of this ridge by uh, the Little Miami River, and they thought it looked like a fort. Not a real good fort design because it had like 67 or 70 openings to get into it, and like the openings where the mounds were coming together, some of them were paved with stones, like saying like, welcome, come on in. This was most definitely a ceremonial site. What they were doing there is still kind of unknown because there's not a lot of artifacts within the mound itself. So it's thought that people take pilgrimages here to work on the mounds and build this kind of ring around this hilltop. And what's crazy is the estimated construction time of this project is two to 300 years. So people were like, walking around here building these mounds generation after generation to make this thing and why well we're still not exactly sure the only part we know about that has some really interesting astronomical significance is up in the northern part up at the top where those notches in the mounds if you're standing on a certain place you can watch the sun rise through the mounds on summer solstice spring equinox fall uh, winter solstice and fall equinox and so that was their way of telling time, making the sun go there. So this is pretty huge and massive of an undertaking. Again, I was thinking like something smaller, maybe a little more manageable, maybe something that wouldn't take 200 years to build. Uh, that's what I'd go with. 
This is Serpent Mound, uh, about 90 minute drive east of Cincinnati. Uh, this is the largest effigy mound in the world, a mound that looks like a shape or an animal. This one's supposed to be a serpent. It's about a quarter mile long from one side to the other. It has this serpent head eating an egg, which is kind of a cool symbolism of something we're not sure because they didn't leave any records about this. The one thing we do know is you see those three coils down there. Those three coils are your time telling device. So if you're standing by that one coil there on the left side and you look between the coil and up to the other side, that is the direction that the winter solstice sun rises. The middle coil is where the spring and fall equinox sun rises, and the one coil on the right is pointing you to the summer solstice. So, quarter mile long calendar, still works good. Go check it out on one of the, uh, this is, uh, seasonal changes, it's pretty cool. All right, it's that time again for Hey Dean. This is, uh, you know, as people find out that I'm an astronomer, they always have spacey questions. Uh, like I'm at parties, I'm out in public, everybody's like, hey, Dean. And they want to know all about space, like a planet or something like that. Today's one is about archaeoastronomy. And so my hey, Dean question definitely is a Cincinnati one, is that there's this park along the river with these very strange seven pillars that are just kind of arranged in a weird fashion called seven vessels. And so the question is, hey, Dean, What's the deal with that weird sculpture down by the river? Uh, this sculpture is kind of cool. So there's where it is, right along the river at Theodore M. Barry. Yeah, M was the middle initial, Theodore M. Barry Park, uh, right close to uh, uh, Sawyer Point uh, along the river. It's a little lesser known park, but very cool. And this is the seven pillars or the seven vessels in question. And so remember I was telling you about how the ancients were trying to mark sunrises at certain times of year? Well, an artist made something for Cincinnati. We got three on one side, three on the other side, and one in the middle. And so basically you have these three that are supposed to be marking the three rising points. So the one on the left is winter solstice sunrise, one in the middle is equinox, so, uh, so spring and fall, and then the one on the right is the summer solstice. And then the other three on the other side are doing the setting. So summer, wait, wrong way. Yeah, uh, now shoot, now I'm getting all mixed up. Hold on, West. No, that's winter over there. Winter on the left, spring and fall in the middle, summer on the right. Uh, anyway, it's, you'll, you'll figure it out. It's one of those. And so then in the middle, there's the seventh one that has the sun coming through it. So the sun would come through this notch every single day, no matter what the season. Now, these positions of these things are very specific because you might be saying, well, all right, so like they made those three coils on the serpent. That was just like accident, right? No, each latitude on earth has its own different like positioning of these things. And so it's very specific to the location. So you're not just gonna accidentally put three things down like that and they're not gonna be pointed at the, at the, the seasons. And so here's the layout. And uh, it was really cool because when this was put in, the Cincinnati Parks uh, thought, you know, uh, this guy that designed this, I, I wonder if he did it right. And so I was so honored because they emailed me. Uh, I don't know. Did they email me in 2003? Yeah, they probably called me on my landline or something like that. Anyway, however they got a hold of me, uh, they're like, hey, Dean, um, this guy designed this thing. We want to make sure all the seven pillars are in the right place. Can you come check it out? And I was like, that sounds like exactly the job that I do. And I was happy to say, yes, they put them in exactly the right place. And the parks were really happy because then they didn't have to move them. And uh, there's one little problem, though, is that uh, uh, we were there on the summer solstice to check it out. And th this isn't a picture of the summer solstice. I think this is winter solstice. Um, but the summer solstice, the sun is so high that it barely came through that gap in that seventh pillar. And the artist was there. He's very nervous. He's like, oh, because he was from England. They have a different latitude. Anyway, nerdy stuff. It worked, luckily, uh, or else they would have had to, like, 
cut a bigger notch. But check it out. Uh, downtown uh, Cincinnati along the river called Seven Vessels. It is pretty cool and uh, does the exact same thing Serpent Mound does. Well, so that's it for this week's episode of All Night with Dean Regas. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about archaeoastronomy sites. I hope it uh, maybe encourages you to go travel to some of these. I have a whole mess of these in my archive of places I've been to. And so let me know what you think. If you like this episode, uh, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Put some comments. Let us know what you think. Because I do have a part two, if you want to hear about part two when I went to Newark, Ohio and experienced a once in a generational alignment. And what happens in Newark stays in Newark, but I'll still tell you about it. So hope you enjoy this talk uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy the program and thanks so much for staying up all night with me.